Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Deeksha Pandey and you are watching Urogynecology for Beginners. And I have a new guest, a new face with me today and her name is Kavya, Dr. Kavya. She is a junior resident in our department at Sri Mukambika Institute of Medical Sciences. So uh, Kavya, in urogynecology, whenever we talk about urogynecology, we make it very specific, very precise that we are dealing mostly with quality of health related issues. Very rarely, but there are times that we come across conditions which can be life threatening also. So can you tell me some conditions in urogynecology which can be life threatening? Have you seen or have you heard in your life? Yes ma'am. A case of prolonged prolapse mm -hmm. might have urinary ureter kinking which mm -hmm. might even lead to renal shutdown mm -hmm. or even Very a good. prolonged prolapse can also have a decubitus ulcer which can eventually have a growth. Mm -hmm. and it could be a carcinoma. carcinoma yes so very correctly as kavya pointed out one case that when the, there is long standing complete vaginal eversion or prolapse there can be kinking of ureters leading to renal failure the second cause maybe you have seen a case of yes. uh, a vaginal cancer develop in a case of prolapse uh, but uh, usually it is not very usual scenario but i have seen cases of endometrial cancer with uh, prolapse cervical cancer with prolapse and also vaginal cancer though they happen rarely but a knowledge of this is very important because we have to keep this in mind while seeing these patients okay so uh, what would be the challenge um, uh, if we are suppose there is a cancer okay we'll discuss this little later uh, so what we are going to do we are going to discuss a case uh, which was a very difficult case to manage a complicated case so we'll go through step by step Kavya will be presenting the history for this case followed by examination and then together we can discuss the plan of management. Yes ma'am. So we got a 78 year old Paris lady who mm -hmm. has come to our EMD with a complaints of stroke. So and emergency, she landed, she did not come directly to us. No ma'am. She came to the emergency, emergency. department. Yes mm -hmm. ma'am. So the treating physician has evaluated her and incidentally they have found prolapse on and they have called for an OG opinion. And when we started taking the history, the patient was aware of the prolapse, prolapse for 10 years, ma'am. But she didn't take any medication or any treatment for that. And uh, further evaluation has said that she is also a known diabetic and hypertensive for 3 years. Mm -hmm. And the stroke, uh, was she was also on the stroke medications. Mm -hmm. So all possible comorbidities she had, despite the fact that she knew that she is having prolapse yes, for last 10 years, she did not bother to no, complain it or seek help for that. Yes. And um, uh, she was, uh, you were given consultation or we were given consultation because the doctor noticed while yes, examining that there was a mass hanging between her thighs. So um, when you examined Kavya, what were the findings? Can you tell me? Yes, ma'am. It was a complete prolapse. Mm -hmm. It was an irreducible mass mm -hmm. hanging from the Around what size it was? It was 15 into 15 centimeters, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Huge mass. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It was irreducible as well. Mm -hmm. And then we could also find out there was cystocele mm -hmm. and rectocele. And to our surprise, there was a small growth, ma'am, of mm -hmm. around 4 into 4 centimeters noted on the posterior aspect. It was hard friable and indurated ma'am okay and yes, it was bleeding on touch yes ma'am okay so uh, this was um, a prolapse procedentia yes, and that too just listen to the word carefully what she said it was irreducible that means a case of incarcerated prolapse when you look at it it was looking like a simple kind of prolapse yes, but when for palpating we lifted it up on the posterior aspect there was around four, four into four, four centimeter, centimeter growth which was looking like malignancy yes, because it was bleeding on touch it was friable and it was hard yes okay so what you did Kavya, so after that? with a suspicion of malignancy we have sent a biopsy for hp examination ma'am mm. then it also did come out as grade one squamous cell carcinoma of the vagina ma'am okay so it was as we were thinking that it can be a case of malignancy actually that was proved right on histopathology and it was a cancer incarcerated prolapse many comorbidities with patients and then on top of that there was a cancer also vaginal cancer now how do you deal with it 
we have uh, suggested admission ma'am but then the patient was not willing and we lost follow up for around 5 weeks ma'am mm -hmm. then the patient has again come back to us we have admitted her and first thing was radiological evaluation ma'am very good mm -hmm. uh, we have sent an mri mm -hmm. it showed that it was a lesion was spread even to the rectal but the rectal mucosa was free which was even evaluated in the pr examination ma'am mm -hmm. and there was also a urinary stone ma'am mm -hmm. it could be due to the prolonged stasis and that was the reason mostly yes. so now on mri we found that the growth was there around 4 into 4 cm yes, which was extending towards the rectum however rectal mucosa was free okay that was the growth and incidentally we found there was around 5 into 5 cm stone in the bladder which could be explained due to prolonged stasis as yes. you said in the bladder so these were her complaints now and on top of that to complicate our problems the patient has developed aphasia yes, and she was not able to talk too much like uh, communication was little difficult for her and now was the time that we had to plan her management yes so um, i'll make the case easy for you for squamous cell carcinoma yes. squamous cell carcinoma what is the best if you want to treat a squamous cell carcinoma uh, where else you see squamous cell carcinoma in gynecology cervical cervical cancer so let's think uh, of the same kind of cancer and uh, yeah, in this uh, profile of lady who is old frail having multiple comorbidities what mode of therapy would you choose for her we would like to go for radiation therapy radiation because squamous cell carcinoma responds good yes, to yes. radiation now radiation was not straight forward in this patient yes, will you uh, explain it to me why radiation was not straight forward in this particular case yes because all the entire contents of the uh, pelvis were outside ma'am okay. so in order to give radiation the anatomy was essential to be maintained yeah. and to be identified yes. that which point we because ureters are there bladder is just in front of that rectum is there and the problem is that these kind of cases are so rare and so less in number that actually and it can be of different degrees yeah. so when the anatomy is not normal it is very difficult and we do not have standardized mm. rules how to map them and give radiotherapy if you are giving uh, without planning this radiotherapy you can have more complication like urinary fistula ureteric fistula rectal uh, fistula those kind of complication much higher then you will be making patient's quality of life even worse mm. then what it is with all the problems together yes ma'am okay so um was surgery an option for her okay if you want to do a surgery for a cancer per se what kind of surgery you will uh, do for this patient ideally theoretically it should be complete exenteration it requires uh, exenteration yes. surgery at least if entire bladder you are leaving also you have to leave, uh, dissect the pelvic nodes and take out all the tissue in the posterior compartment of the pelvis but um, it was very difficult for this kind of patient okay so what we went ahead now we wanted actually we wanted to give her radiotherapy but all other problems that incarcerated prolapse can still lead to renal failure yes, okay and with this kind of anatomy it is just not possible to give her radiation safely so we have to do some kind of surgery Sorry. So uh, what surgery we plan for this lady we chose the palliative route ma'am yeah. rather than the complete exenteration very good so we call it palliative surgery, surgery. and uh, tackling all her other problems and giving a place making the anatomy as far as possible normal so that radiation can be given safely to this lady okay yes, so what all you planned in her surgery since uh, for the uh, prolapse ma'am we wanted to do a palliative vaginal hysterectomy yeah. and for the cystocele we wanted to do a colpocleisis anterior colpocleisis mm. and for the rectocele to do the pelvic floor repair mm -hmm. and for the stone we have also tried to do the cystoscopy and stone Remodulous. removal mm -hmm. and to take care of the rectum ma'am we have also planned for a colostomy ma'am yes so the entire surgery we planned with colostomy why colostomy kavya has already explained to you because the involvement of rectal up to muscularis also will was there 
So there is a chance that the rectum might get opened during surgery, if not opened also. The disease was still muscularis, so this rectum, whatever is there, will not be never be continent rectum. Yes. Okay. So and when we are saying that we want to, we are not. She is already seventy-eight years. We want to give her some quality of life because she was when she came second time, she was on diapers. Yes. She had urinary leak. She had. Fecal incontinence, she was going through so much. So we just wanted to make her life a little better. So we planned that we'll do colostomy. So the fecal material will be diverted there. And for the lower part, from the perineal end, we wanted to do hysterectomy with complete colpectomy and colpoclysis. Okay. okay. So uh, uh, this levetoroplasty or perineurephy, what you are saying, colpoperineurephy or pelvic floor repair, that is... Uh, uh, an important component of colpoclysis procedure. Yes, okay, so yeah, we did that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so colpoclysis, I think steps uh, we can tell, but uh, in the next video, we'll be showing you entire procedure. So be with us. Uh, we'll continue the case discussions important part here in a short video. And in the next video, if you are interested, we are going to show you the entire surgery step by step. Yes, okay, so this was the basic thing. And then when we deposited everything after yes, colpoclysis, then did we notice something? Then what you have to check in every colpoclysis case. After you do colpoclysis, after you have done levetroplasty, you must check for one thing. What is that one thing, Kavya? Stress urinary incontinence. Stress urinary incontinence. Yes, and did she have it? Yes, ma'am. There was severe stress urinary incontinence. So huh. we have decided to apply TVTR. Huh. We it, decided means we did. Yes, ma'am. Huh. We did retropubic mid sling also we added. Yes, ma'am. What about the bladder stone? It is a big 5 into 5 centimeter bladder stone. If we don't treat it now, uh, what complication it can uh, cause? Bladder stone, big bladder Could stone. Uh, eventually lead to infection, ma'am. Yes. Can also uh, ascending infection can also lead to pyelonephritis. Very good. And then prolonged stasis. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if if someday this, because now we have reposited it back, yes, it might uh, come to the most dependent part. And most dependent part in normal anatomy will be your uh, where the urethra starts, vesico urethral mm -hmm. junction, and it will block the urine. So whatever you have done, it all goes in vain if you don't treat it. So, if uh, how did we remove that bladder stone? We have done a cystoscopy, ma'am, mm -hmm. and we have broken the stone into multiple tiny pieces and then retrieved the pieces. Okay. So, let me accept it. We did not do it. We uh, took help from the urologist and uh, um, uh, Dr. Vinu uh, did cystoscopy and lysis of the stones and removed it in small bits and parts. Okay. Now, suppose you are a urogynecologist or you are a urologist and for any case like this because where uh, uh, the stasis has led to a stone formation and you are doing other repairs suddenly you find that there is a stone there and you are not very like I am not very confident in removing such big stone by a cystoscopy. Can you do something? What can be done ma'am? So it is very simple by chance if you face this scenario in your OT you just make an incision on the bladder, dome of the bladder, remove the stone in toto and suture the bladder in two layers. Okay? okay. And you can put the urethral. Important thing is the bladder should be continuously drained for three to four weeks after that and by the time bladder will heal. So don't leave that stone inside. So this I'm telling you because everybody is not working in a medical college setting or a multi-speciality hospital where you have all the helps available. So this is a fair enough procedure and it works well. Okay, But mind it that stone must be removed if you want to prevent later complications. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So uh, meanwhile, one more thing I wanted to tell. When we were doing this perineal procedure and uh, the surgeons were doing... Uh, uh, this um, colostomy simultaneously the idea was because patient already had so many comorbidities and the only idea was to reduce her time in GA so yes. that's both procedures could be done in same time and could could get over together yes ma'am okay so um, uh, this was uh, the patient how did the patient do post-operatively post-operatively we could Visualize that the patient's quality of life was much better, ma'am. Mm -hmm. She didn't need any diapers anymore. Mm -hmm. And was she discharged from hospital? Has she been discharged from yes, the hospital? She was discharged mm -hmm. after seven days post-operatively. Mm -hmm. 
So after her quality of life changed, even her um, sugar levels started coming under control. And um, uh, on around 10th, 9th or 10th day, we discharged the patient from the hospital and she is doing fine uh, yes, now. Okay. One more thing I'll ask you. What is the name of when we do this vaginal hysterectomy with complete colpoclysis? Yes, ma'am. Is there a specific name given to this procedure? Yes, ma'am. It's called Ruhaya's palliative vaginal hysterectomy with colpoclysis, ma'am. 100 on 100 marks for that. Oh, very good. Thank you. Okay. Other than this, tell me any two points you learn and then we'll finish this case discussion from this case. One thing I've uh, learned is that it is not a, just about the surgery that we do, but the main aim is to improve the quality of life for the yes. patient. Ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then how simultaneous approaches will help the patient ma'am, yes. as a whole. So that was, I feel that is one case I wanted to discuss with you all. And thank you, Kavya, for being with me for this case. Thank you so much. Thank See you, you soon. For all the knowledge. Thank you. Thank you.